It's been just about a year since Apple added Vega graphics as an option to higher tier MacBook Pros. So in today's video, I bought the cheapest one I could find and we're gonna see how it stacks up in terms of overall value. So what gave me the idea to make this video? Well, back in July, Apple replaced my 2016 MacBook Pro that had a lot of trouble with the keyboard with a brand new near top of the line 2019 model. So this guy has almost everything upgraded except for the graphics. And that got me thinking, this generation of MacBook Pro has been around for three years now. And in that period of time, the stock graphics options have barely changed. This generation of MacBook Pro is three years old now, and in that span of time, graphics have barely advanced on these computers. The Radeon Pro 460 from 2016 is really not a huge amount slower than the Radeon Pro 560X in this brand new $3,600 laptop. However, last year, Apple added the option of equipping Vega graphics on higher end MacBook Pros. Now, sure, they should have made that standard this year. It should have been Vega 16 on the base, Vega 20 on the high end at the very least. But nevertheless, regardless of how they did it, this is the cheapest Vega graphics MacBook Pro I could buy. Now this video isn't gonna be some sort of like showcase of how I got a crazy good deal and how I beat everything out. This was very simple. I said, I would like to buy the cheapest Vega graphics MacBook Pro. So I went on eBay and I looked up MacBook Pro Vega and I sorted by price low to high and this was the cheapest one. It worked. Let's open it up and see what we got. Well, wouldn't you know it, it's a MacBook Pro. Okay, so this thing was listed as being in excellent condition and I would say that is a pretty good description. Granted, I, I don't know how old this machine is, but it's probably under a year. The Vega MacBook Pro has only existed for a year. So, not too shabby. It looks like we've got our original charger brick. We don't need to pull that out. So, all's looking good so far. You may be wondering, how much did this machine cost? Well, $2,400. And that's a little bit interesting because, sure, that's the cheapest Vega MacBook Pro, but it's certainly not a cheap MacBook Pro. 2018 MacBook Pros have come down in price quite substantially since they came out last year. You can get them for $2,000, even a little bit less than that for base model units. Uh, but the Vega ones are really, really expensive. And partially, I think that's due to the fact that most of the time they are paired with like a Core i9, 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, something like that. This particular one has the i7, 16 gigs of RAM, and the half terabyte SSD. So this is the lowest end configuration that you could get with a Vega 20, which is probably also why it was the cheapest. Okay, so let's talk about the value of the least expensive Vega 20 MacBook Pro. Normally, I spend at least a little bit of time talking about the physical machine, but I'm not gonna focus on that here because you all know about the MacBook Pro design. It's nice, it's thin, and the keyboards suck. The 2018 keyboards don't suck as bad as the 16s, 17s, but I've heard of a few issues cropping up here and there, so it's best to be wary of long-term reliability. All right, so with that out of the way, let's talk about performance. There is simply no MacBook out there that offers better graphics performance than this one. There's no getting around that. And sure, $2,400, we're in new MacBook Pro territory here. You can find the 2019 Core i9 MacBook Pro for $2,400 pretty frequently at Best Buy or Amazon, but if graphics are the most important upgrade, you really can't beat this. Vega 20 is going to cost you at least $3,150 if you buy a new MacBook Pro. And on the used market, most examples will be close to $3,000 or even $4,000 if they go crazy with the options. So the reason that mine was less expensive is because Vega 20 graphics were the only major upgrade. Other than that, it was the standard configuration. But the real question is, is the Vega 20 worth the upgrade? In Unigen Heaven, we get the best demonstration of just how much better the Vega 20 is than the standard MacBook Pro graphics. The Radeon Pro 460 from a high-end 2016 MacBook Pro scores 465 in the extreme test, and the 2019 with 560X graphics scores 556 points. That's not a huge improvement considering the three years between these devices. However, if we add the Vega 20, it gets nuts. 
this thing scores 1007. That's nearly twice the score of the 560X. Let's bring in some comparisons to other Macs to show where this guy stacks up in the graphics department. You can see here we're beating the Trash Can Mac Pro, my 2013 iMac with 780M graphics, and my old 2015 iMac as well. This is really solid performance. Now, while graphics are for sure the main show with this experiment, the CPU performance is still important. This guy has the Core i7-8850H configuration. It's a 6-core, 12-thread processor, and it definitely performs well, even if it doesn't quite match the bananas performance of the 8-core i9 in the current-gen MacBook Pro. In Geekbench 4, we're talking about 22,500 multi-core and 2250 in Cinebench R20, which is pretty much identical to the 2018 Core i9 configuration, thanks to that processor being hampered pretty significantly by the thermal limitations of the chassis here. The i7 in my machine handles prolonged utilization pretty well. When running back-to-back -back Cinebench, it's able to stay boosted to about 3.1 to 3.3 gigahertz on all six cores while staying shy of the 100 Celsius T-junction, if only just. I wish Apple was more aggressive with their fan curve to keep the temps down, but at least we don't have to worry about thermal throttling. A 500 to 700 megahertz sustained boost clock is definitely respectable, even if the temps are on the higher side. Now, speaking of thermals, that's actually another advantage of the Vega graphics. Because of the newer architecture compared to the comparatively ancient Polaris chips, these things run a lot cooler. So if you're doing 4K video editing where you're running the CPU and the GPU, because you're getting less heat generated by the GPU, there's a little bit more breathing room for the processor. One area where this showcases very nicely is in Final Cut Pro. And in fact, everything that you've seen and this entire video has been edited on this Vega 20 MacBook Pro. And it did a very very, very good job. So for my videos, I shoot 4K 8-bit. My A roll is 30 frames and my B roll is 60 frames so I can slow it down after the fact. A typical video for me also includes, you know, A roll, B roll, color grading, transitions, titles, effects, stuff like that. So if you look back here in this part of the video that you just saw, there's a decent amount of stuff going on here. And the only thing that I noticed is when we're talking about editing the original content, not editing proxy media, there can be some slowdowns on this device. I tend to edit at a pretty quick pace. Once all of my footage is imported, I start cutting together my timeline very quickly. And what I started to notice was if I really was layering things up without waiting for stuff to render, I was dropping frames and the playback wasn't as smooth as it is on my 2019 Core i9 iMac. Now granted, this is you know, Vega 48, Core i9-9900K, it's a much more powerful machine than this laptop, and it's also much more expensive than this laptop, but it was definitely noticeable the amount that I had to wait for stuff to render. However, once everything was rendered, there's absolutely no issue, and it renders very quickly thanks to those Vega 20 graphics. In fact, one of the things that I noticed while waiting for things to render is my CPU utilization was only about 30 or 40%. The GPU really takes a lot of load off the CPU and allows it to go through the project pretty quickly. So let's talk about overall thoughts about the cheapest Vega 20 MacBook Pro that you can really find. And really the hardest part about this is finding a Vega 20 MacBook Pro. Here's the eBay results for MacBook Pro Vega 20 and there are only 22 results on all of eBay. In fact, I mentioned that most of these computers were three or $4,000 and the cheapest one that I can currently see out of these 22 listings is $3,100. These are really, really expensive, and that's one of the reasons why they've held their value so well is because there just aren't a lot of them out there. People didn't really buy them as much. So that'll do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments below, do you think the Vega 20 is a worthwhile upgrade? I didn't talk a whole lot about gaming performance in this video, but I'm open to making another video where I talk about how this thing handles in games. If you were interested in that, let me know down in the comments below. Although obviously, let's make no mistake, this is not a gaming computer. That's not what it's designed for, but it can still handle it and handle it pretty well. So let me know that stuff down in the comments below. As usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And please consider following me on Twitter at Luke Miani. 
Please also consider joining my subreddit if you have any questions, and you can find those things linked down in the description below. And I'm also gonna put a link in the description to that 2019 MacBook Pro that's on sale, the i9 one that I showed earlier. So make sure to check out the description for all of those things, and I'll see you all in the next video.